Hello gems and welcome back to the Sapphire Star. This is episode number six for our live 2D with making a VTuber series. In this episode, we're gonna go over exporting your model and testing your model using something other than VTube Studio. We're gonna be using the Cubism Viewer, which is a little bit different than VTube Studio, just great for testing purposes. We'll also go over auto blinking and lip syncing and how to set that up. And I'm also going to give a few more tips for the Texture Atlas, which we learned in an earlier episode. All right, let's get to it. If you're interested in purchasing Live2D, I do have a discount code below if you haven't seen it already. So make sure to check that out in the description or in the pinned comments. We're going to set up auto blinking and lip syncing. And we'll do that by going over to our parameters, clicking the hamburger menu and going to settings for eye blinking and lip sync. We're going to select IL open and IR open for eye blinking. And for lip syncing, we'll go to mouth form and mouth open and then go ahead and click OK. Great, we got that set up and we'll test that in a bit. Next, I wanna talk a little bit more about the Texture Atlas in detail, which we utilized earlier, which you can get back into by clicking this button here. So as a friendly reminder, make sure that everything is scaled to 100%, otherwise your model will look blurry or low resolution. So if the art looks a little blurry or not, high quality you either started your file in photoshop or whatever program you used with a small resolution or if you start it with a high resolution but it's coming out blurry on the other end that this scales to 100 to get the best option possible if we're running out of space on the main texture atlas here we can actually click add texture and we'll do texture atlas 2 and you can do the same that we did earlier with selecting your pixel ratio so we'll just do the same and if you want to bring a piece from this atlas over to this one you'll just click it and then click on the other one so now you can see it brought it over here and it has been moved on over and again if you have anything over here in the right side you can double click and it will get dragged out and the same rules will apply here to make sure that these are scaled at 100 so that you're getting the max resolution for your work and going over again that no overlaps are occurring and creating multiple texture atlases if you need to so i'm just going to double click everything in to make sure i have all the extra pieces even though i haven't rigged any of these yet this is all her extra set of hair and her extra shirt and outfit. All right, and now I'm gonna highlight it all and just click automatic layout. This margin is gonna be how far apart the pieces are from each other. The higher it is, the further apart they'll be, the lower the closer, closer they'll be. And then we'll go ahead and click okay and let it automatically lay out. And then let's highlight everything again and make sure it's 100 and it looks like it is. So everything looks good to go there and then we can click okay. And then let it generate, give it some time to do its thing. Now, a lot of people will ask, what are you supposed to do for the size? So as we saw earlier, like the this texture size is 8192 by 8192. For VTubers, you're probably pretty okay going at a pretty high resolution, although the higher it goes, the higher chances you have of the model taking up more space and potentially lagging your computer. Now for VTubers, you should be good in the most cases. You can also change it or edit it later if your PC starts to lag. The only times where you'll really want to make things a lower resolution might be in the case that you're making a game with using Live 2D, say in Unity for example, and you have multiple characters characters and the all the animation and characters are really making the game run slow those will be times where you might want to conserve space and of course there are best practices for conserving space and helping characters be as optimized as possible when making something more complex like a game next we're going to go up and go to file export now we've used vtube studio for moving our model and testing it but here's another additional way to test it with a live 2d's program which is the cubism viewer so first we're going to go up to file Export for runtime and export as an MOC3 file. This may take a while if your model is especially a large file. So again, you may wanna walk away, go do something else and come back. Once you have this little menu up, you can go ahead and click okay. And you'll choose where to save the model to. I'm gonna save the model to episode six test. We'll go ahead and save that, let it do its thing. Here is what the files look like after you save everything out. Now we can open Live 2D Cubism Viewer 4.2 and we'll let that launch. And then we'll drag our MOC3 file into the viewer. And I just went down to click display all to see the full model. And now I'm using scroll wheel to zoom in and spacebar to move around and I can move the character around here. So we don't have physics yet in the hair and stuff, but this is a good way to test your model as well if you're not using VTube Studio or something along those lines. And you can see all your parameters down here as well. This is also a great place where you're gonna be able to look at your animations as well as adding emotes 
and exporting those out and again we'll talk about that later but super exciting we have the auto blinking working as you can see now as well in the next episode we're going to learn how to create an animation with our model which is going to be great because you can use that for vtubing you can use it for if you're making like an animated series lots of different ways you can do that for game rigs everything there are a lot of different options for you to be able to use the animation feature and then the episode after that we will dive into the physics and getting smooth physics moving around and then finally we'll wrap everything up and you'll have completed your first full 2d model using a live 2d cubism all right i will see you in the next episode bye